what a pleasure for African Ascent to, to have this um, a special event uh, that some of my colleagues at Berkeley College of Music uh, have been quite generously uh, extending to the program uh, by way of being uh, friendly, uh, collegial, and most uh, importantly, uh, topical uh, with African Ascent. Uh, tonight, uh, for example, African Ascent will be taking on uh, a very unusual uh, topic uh, that uh, we have never dealt, um, to, to, to dealt with before. Uh, we're going to think and uh, learn everything that we need to know about ghosts. What are ghosts? Do they exist? How do they exist? How do they shape our lives? How do they intervene uh, into our imaginations, into our emotions, and into our passions? Uh, ghosts, by way of uh, fascinating uh, the human condition, uh, have been uh, quite topical in the lives of uh, thinkers, uh, philosophers, and most uh, prominently uh, poets. So what uh, African Ascent um, is uh, dedicated to do, and uh, do it uh, as well as the program could, uh, we've been uh, consistently maintaining uh, standards of uh, quality uh, that many of our viewers uh, seem to be uh, quite appreciative of, uh, is to talk about this topic very loosely, uh, clearly, uh, intelligently, and uh, vividly uh, to the satisfaction of each and every one of you. Uh, my guest tonight is a young scholar from Berkeley College of Music uh, that my colleagues um, out there uh, consider to be uh, an emerging star. He's a prolific writer, uh, a great teacher, uh, a great thinker, and um, a great describer, and most importantly, a very curious human being um, who likes uh, other cultures, who is fascinated by them, who, who visits with them, uh, who studies them, and then who attempts to present them uh, to the visual world uh, in a very uh, interesting way. Uh, and of course, uh, I'm proud uh, to, to reveal to you that my guest is a product of one of the leading universities in the world, namely uh, the great University of Chicago, uh, in which uh, he studied a PhD in anthropology. Uh, one of his uh, key works, which I had uh, the pleasure to read, uh, in fact, um, I yet have to re uh, review it uh, for, for, for professional journals, uh, but I'm planning to do that, is called Taiwanese Pilgrimage uh, to China, uh, I believe. Yeah. And it has a subtitle which, which reads as Ritual, Melancholy, and... Ritual, Complicity, Community. And community. Uh, and uh, he's also now uh, busily engaged in um, um, uh, producing a second book uh, with a very uh, titillating uh, title. I think he calls it uh, Diverse Traces. Afghan Asen is pleased to bring you Professor John Donald Hatfield from Berkeley College of Music. Welcome to Afghan Asen. Thank you, Tillis. Well, um, as I said, uh, I think um, uh, my viewers um, uh, have been thinking uh, about something like uh, uh, ghosts for quite some time. Um, uh, as I told you in many uh, private conversations, for example, uh, I am myself fascinated uh, w w w with these ghosts. Uh, I, I believe it's uh, Wordsworth, uh, the great uh, English poet, who says he is visited by many ghosts, uh, but they don't dare to, to, to come to him because it is falsely said, uh, he says, uh, that there is uh, an intercourse between the dead and the living. Um, uh, so uh, ghosts have been um, fascinating figures right. in, in the lives of uh, great thinkers. Why do we believe in ghosts, assuming that we do? I think there are many reasons why people might believe in ghosts, but they, they don't fall into a lot of the typical explanations that had been made in the past. Right, so there were, there, were, there were a series of explanations that had been made um, in the late 19th and early 20th centuries about how ghosts were um, kind of a misunderstanding of, of dream states. But I think ghosts are actually more important than that. And our fascination with ghosts is often a product of a deep unease, a, a deep sense perhaps that something is, is, is wrong or out of kilter, that relationships aren't right um, within a particular environment, right? So in the, the places where I, I do research, um, mostly in, in Taiwan, ghosts are really thought of as, as really living in a particular landscape. They, they belong to a particular piece of land, and they make their appearances there. But they, they make their appearances there 
because they're people for whom there really is no place. If there, there is a, a socially marginal um, and also an environmentally marginal, ghosts are, are both of those, those categories. Ghosts don't fit kinship systems. They are often forgotten. Or they reside in places that people have neglected. So when we see ghosts and, and um, images of ghosts, they often signal for us that something is awry, something is out of place. So I, I like to think of them as um, often not fitting categories neatly. Right? So they, they point out to us where our categories maybe break down or don't make sense, whether those are cognitive categories or, or moral ones. Mm -hmm. uh, remember once um, uh, when I came into your office and um, in great despair, um, uh, I shared with you uh, this um, extraordinary uh, visitor uh, that I have been having um, uh, in my own uh, private lives uh, at night, uh, who came to visit with me uh, for quite a long period of time. Uh, occasionally, this visitor would come in the form of huge hands, who would just engulf every part of my body. And I could feel the, the, the anguish and the fear because I couldn't breathe. And then I could also visually see these gigantic hands that just, that are just um, all over my body. And um, uh, this event uh, kept on occurring and occurring until I think about uh, two months ago, uh, from which time onwards uh, this particular ghost uh, has stopped uh, visiting with me. And then uh, I did ask you, uh, although you're not a medical doctor, uh, but uh, very well read uh, in, in, in ancient um, uh, medical practices, uh, meditation, and most importantly, uh, your interest in ghosts. Um, uh, I did ask you to, to, to decipher uh, the meaning of this nightly visit, uh, the visit with me. Um, may I take uh, the pleasure to, to have you uh, decipher it for the public? What do you think uh, is going on? Do you think it's because my, my brain uh, the, 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 the medical profession w would say is overheated uh, at that particular time and in that I may be having delusions and uh, hallucinations or is there an alternative explanation do you think? There, there, there are a number of, of explanations. Medically people have talked about this phenomenon that in, in China people refer to it as, as a sitting ghost, a ghost that comes and sit on, sits on top of you. People have talked about this medically in terms of what happens when you're in between a state of wakefulness and being asleep. Suddenly, you may wake up. Um, and it's, it's sort of so sudden that your mind is partially clear, but your, your body is still not used to being awake. And your limbs are, are still like heavy and sleepy. And so physiologically, there may be explanations for this. But I, I remember that I said to you, well, it may, be a, it may be a psychological prophylactic, but it may be something that would be useful to do if you might think about, well, who were the previous residents of the house? Or was there some way that you could think about the, this nightly visitor as someone who was forgotten? Can you? introduce some means to remember who that is in some small fashion. And, and that, that um, in, in the, the ghost cosmology would be a way of bringing the ghost back into a relationship with you. Because the ghost ideas are, are about this, how we solve the, this breach. If ghost exists because of a breach in our um, common world in which they're not in included, then the, the cure of haunting is, is to include them somehow, to remember them somehow, to give them a name, to give them a place in our practices through which we might relate to them as ethical beings. It's remarkable. Be yeah, because their reaction to us is, is often just because they're, they're, no one listens. So I think there's a deep wisdom about a lot of uh, issues of marginalization in general when we talk I about see, ghosts. I see, I see. And th 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 there is also this um, other phenomenon that is uh, quite prominent in uh, certain cultural practices. Uh, let me share one with you. 
uh, I, I did mention this to, to you because um, uh, I am single. Uh, I live alone. I, I don't quick, uh, cook uh, very often. Uh, so the refrigerator uh, is almost completely empty. Uh, it doesn't have much in it uh, besides some um, ice cubes, some um, uh, boiled water, and uh, occasionally maybe one Ethiopian dish or so. So um, one of my friends who came to visit with me and who is uh, accustomed to a splendidly uh, rich kitchen, of course, uh, woke up in the morning and uh, asked me for breakfast. And of course, there is nothing to eat. And um, <laughs> he was quite stunned. And then um, I shared with him um, this story about this nightly visitor. And uh, his explanation is that uh, it's conceivable uh, that these ghosts, these beings whom you think are ethical subjects, uh, others uh, whose presence uh, we never uh, directly acknowledge, uh, may, may, may feel um, abused uh, the, because there is nothing that they're, uh, that they're going to be nourished by. So before he left, he made a point to go to s s Stop and Shop and um, rendered a huge shopping for me, <laughs> uh, stuffed the refrigerator, and he told me that I should continue doing this uh, because the story that I told him uh, for him was a reflection of the fact that there is an angry ghost who is just starved, who is famished, and uh, who is punishing me uh, for, um, for depriving him of food. What is the status of, of these kinds of uh, explanations on your view? Well, that, that's, I mean, that's an interesting thing that he would say that, although I would say, as in many ghost practices, you were the direct uh, and real beneficiary of his largesse in buying the food. <laughs> but um, in, in fact, in, in Taiwan, as is the case in a lot of Southeast China, there are um, annual ghost festivals. And the annual ghost festival is something between carnival um, in its overturning of the normal social order and the idea that all the ghosts are released from the earthly prisons and they can come out and play. So there's an element of the carnival, but there's also an element of it that's about feeding and, and nurturing. And so most people who practice um, Taiwanese folk Taoism or Buddhism will um, on intervals, certainly on this, this ghost festival, which is in the summer, but also during um, nearly every month, they will put out a little bit of food. I see. Um, maybe, maybe some rice, maybe some drinks, maybe a pack of cigarettes, maybe a bowl with some water and a towel and a toothbrush, things that the ghosts would, would need. And um, I have some friends who are um, Latin American, they're, they're, they're from Mexico, and when um, they saw me doing this one time at my house, they said to me, oh, that, that's actually like the, the Day of the Dead. You know, we, we believe that the ghosts of our ancestors come to visit us on the Day of the Dead, and we have to make the ofrenda, and part of the ofrenda is always um, water to clean them after their long journey, but also food. And some of the food is, is warm and considered particularly nourishing.